One of the things that always has held true about professional wrestling is never say never. Especially when it comes to WWE. Never say never. Unless you're talking about Chris Benoit being in the WWE Hall of Fame. Then you could comfortably say never say never on that shit and be like, oh, that's just never going to happen, right? Like, you can't say never say never. It's just going to be a never. Um, so, that brings me to CM Punk, who when he walked out of WWE in 2014, there was a lot of talk about, is he truly done with professional wrestling? Could he really leave it all behind? And it's one of those never say never things, just like when he decided he wanted to go be a UFC fighter. And he went and did that and got his bell rung and his shit kicked in a couple of fights, right? Never say never. And it led to a lot of people saying post UFC stuff, hey, is CM Punk going to come back to WWE? Well, meanwhile, here comes AEW into the fold and they're, you know, the other big ticket in town and a lot of discussion about whether CM Punk was ever going to come back to professional wrestling, AEW might be the perfect spot for him to do that. And there were a number of people that wanted it, a number of people that believed it would happen, but a number of people that actually thought and believed that he wouldn't come back to wrestling, that he had had enough, that he had made enough money. It's a good reminder of never say never because a couple of years ago, what happened? CM Punk goes to AEW. CM Punk back in professional wrestling. Never say never. And admittedly, the CM Punk experience in AEW was kind of a mixed bag, right? Like, there was some good programming, some good work, some good matches. Uh, but there's a lot of drama and a lot of bullshit associated with him being there, right? Some of it's on Tony Khan, certainly. Some of it's on the EVPs. And some of it's just flat on CM Punk for being a whiny, bitchy brat about everything. He's just a freaking unhappy individual. Like, why would you be so unhappy all the time? It's not that bad. Dude, you're making seven figures. You're getting to pursue your dream, your passion in life. Like, get over your fucking selves. Jesus. But now, CM Punk has been fired with cause by Tony Khan AEW, which puts CM Punk out there on the open market, which inevitably is leading to all the conversations which are only growing in intensity here about the possibility of CM Punk returning to WWE. And for many, this feels like that that would never happen. There's no way he burned so many bridges, but we should know by now. WWE is a never say never company. Unless it's say never to putting Macho Man in the Hall of Fame while he's still alive. Say never to like, hey, let's make sure we actually use the proper harness for Owen Hart at Over the Edge 99. Now, those are instances where they say never. But uh, generally, other than that, it is never say never. He has Vince McMahon has had, especially Vince, right, WWE, but especially Vince McMahon, have had so many issues with wrestlers over the years of their own creation, the wrestler's creation, the combination of it. You know, Bruno San Martino. He'll never come back and be associated with WWE in any capacity until he was, and he was inducted into the Hall of Fame. You know, there's certainly plenty of beef with Vincent Hogan over the years. Vincent Austin, right? Like, WWE allowed Rock's contract to expire in 20, 2004 like fucking idiots. Like, I'd go on and on, right? Of all the people. Hall and Nash. Like, all these people that left, all these people that had issues, and they never, they never come back until they did. Because it's about business. And at the end of the day, unlike some of the people involved with AEW, and this is a shot at them, the people at WWE understand the importance of, hey, we're here to make money. Like, if it will do business, we'll give it a shot. Now, granted that 
is if it's their idea, right? If it's something that organically, naturally gets over without the WWE machine being behind it, there is absolutely no guarantee that they're going to roll with that. But the real question here at this point is, should WWE even bother with CM Punk? Do they need his funky ass? Why bother? You look at WWE right now, and in terms of from a pure business standpoint, when you talk about their live event attendance is pretty strong. Their television ratings for SmackDown, at least, pretty strong. NXT is okay. Raw, they're right? But their number of people that they get to watch, their live events on Peacock is really strong. Like a number of strong performance indicators for WWE. Do you really need to introduce CM Punk into this mix? Do you need to be bothered with him and the potential inevitable bag of bullshit that he comes along with? And I think the short answer here is yes. And here's why. CM Punk is not getting any younger. You're at a place now where CM Punk has been gone so long from WWE that you can bring him back. And you could do a number of interesting, compelling stories, a number of interesting, compelling angles with him. Like you could think about CM Punk and Cody Rhodes. There, You could go different places with that. If you want to say CM Punk versus Randall Keith Orton, you could certainly go there. Could you do CM Punk versus Roman Reigns? You're goddamn right you could. Could you do CM Punk versus LA Knight? You absolutely could. Like, you've got so many newer faces at the top for a CM Punk to work with that it could feel incredibly fresh. And just from Jump Street, you could see when selectively chosen and put in the right spot, Seth Rollins is going to be another one. And you know there's some animosity there. And you could take that animosity and make business out of it. You could easily see being able to get two years of business out of CM Punk. There's no question that CM Punk is a needle mover to at least some small degree, right? For AEW, he was arguably their biggest draw. He was a huge merch seller. There's no reason to think that him coming back to WWE, the place that he left nine plus years ago, wouldn't be a big deal, especially if he did it all around Survivor Series weekend in Chicago. Um, he would move merch. Like, this is a company that's always looking for like big names, something new to keep people interested. And Punk is an old face that would be coming back to an old place. But he would have been gone so long, he will feel like a new face. And maybe, just maybe, even though I'm sure there's a lot of animosity there still between Punk and Triple H, especially from Punk's side to Triple H, not that it's unjustified by any stretch of the imagination. You know, time heals all wounds, as do big paychecks. Like, CM Punk also has to know, like, hey, I fuck up at WWE again. I might not be able to make this type of money again anything else I do. So if I want to make this money now while I can... I probably got to behave a little bit better. And maybe WWE's in a better place of where they know how to deal with his petulant kind of bratty behavior because they did it for a decade before, right? Like, they were able to tolerate him a lot longer than AEW was. And that's because of the leadership at the top. Like, the leadership at the top will sit there and say flat out, like, we run this shit at the end of the day. We don't have to put up with anybody no matter who it is. You know, so CM Punk coming back at Survivor Series, getting him into the fold when you talk about the Royal Rumble, when you talk about WrestleMania 40, like, fuck yeah, you got to sign me up for that, at least in the short term. I hope he would be grown up enough and man enough to stop being a whiny baby about everything, but that's probably too much to ask. And it potentially would be a spot where, you know, he'll out, he'll run through his welcome in WWE really quickly and people will be like, oh, that's why we didn't want to fucking bother with him. And don't get me wrong, there is a there was a risk associated with like introducing him into your locker room, introducing him into the company again, and like how, what type of infrastructure do you have in place? How are you able to handle that? How are you able to deal with that? Are you potentially comfortable with having like two sets of rules and interactions, one for CM Punk and one for most of the rest of the locker room? It's a fair question to ask. But for the WWE, they have always been a company that's been about like, We will do what's ever right for business as they see business to be right. And if they see no matter what that past history is, like they will look past that to bring somebody back and do some more business with them. Now, sometimes that could come with the trade-off of like, hey, we're going to bring you back, but we're going to send you a message first. You're going to have to learn how to play our game now. But 
WWE would be nuts to at least not explore bringing CM Punk in. Needs to be on a short leash, though. Can't let that shit fly again. But I'm sorry if any of us were in that spot, when you, especially when you're talking about WWE, you've got another major North American wrestling company in AEW. You know, anything you could do to add some talent to the fold that you know is a known, proven, established star, you have to fucking do it. So, while not ideal, the WWE, to me, has to bring in CM Punk. They'd be crazy not to. 